Hello, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Maurice, I'm from the speakers and the founder of bookingworldspeakers.com. And please, uh, we welcome you all in the chat. Let me know where you're from. Thank you for having you here in this webinar. We are about to begin in a few minutes. Hello, everyone. Please use the chat where you're from. Oh, Tracy is also here from Canada. Welcome Toronto, of course. Well, welcome Ontario, Canada. Welcome The Hague, Netherlands. And my colleague Lillian, Lillian from Maastricht. The be most beautiful place of the Netherlands. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We are about to begin. Welcome, USA. Thank you for having you in this webinar. We are about to begin. We wait a couple of minutes to have everyone in this webinar. Tell me how many webinars, power webinars that you already visited of us. Uh, is this your first webinar? Let us know. Your second, your third. In total, this is our eighth webinar. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Stephen. Welcome, Jenny. Welcome, Nina from England. Welcome. It's good to have you here. The seventh, I see Inike. Welcome, the seventh. Proud. It's great to have you here again. I, I'm very curious which one did you miss, uh, Inike? <laughs> Didek, uh, it's your first. I hope it's not your last because we are very looking forward to keep on going, to inspire, to motivate, and to share the positive message and to create a better place for, for all of us. Ottawa, welcome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also very excited. I did a couple of webinars already, but this one, I, I, yeah, I, I connected two beautiful human beings and I originally, I did not know why I connected those beautiful human beings, but we will soon know because it was from my intuition that, that I did that. And then we did our briefing call last week and it was beautiful to see there were so many common things in both lives. So let, let me introduce you uh, to invite those uh, two beautiful human beings. Um, I invite Tracy first to come into the webinar and Mark, please let me know. Uh oh. I don't yeah. hear you. Uh, do you? Hello, hello. Okay, okay. There's no, nothing wrong. No, hello, hello. Oh, how wonderful. Look at the thousands joining us. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Mar March, uh, please uh, click on your uh, camera and then we will see you. And this is every, every uh, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. You see, Mart knows that I love a man in uniform. So he was giving me the uniform picture and then revealing his handsome mug for us all. Very handsome mug, but we'll keep it a secret just for now. Just we'll for now. With... Look yeah. at your beautiful sweater. Yeah, th th thank you for having you both in this webinar. It's a beautiful webinar. It's about the Invictus meets the Unstoppable, of course. Um, 
a couple of things to, to share with the attendees. Uh, you, you, you are using already the, the chat function. Um, please, we have a, a, also an interactive part during this webinar. Uh, feel free to ask your questions for these beautiful people. Um, the reason why I brought those two together is, well, uh, let, let me first start with, with, with Mart. Mart is a very special person. And I asked him just a couple of minutes before this webinar, do you still know the moment that we met, met each other? And he said, from, oh, I'm, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> and I just uh, shared with him the Rijks Museum, the most beautiful museum of, of the Netherlands, where uh, the Rembrandt uh, painting is hanging. And then the light was it was the 200th year anniversary of the the land forces of the army of the dutch land forces and uh, there was a, another speak, speaker in front of him and i my my passion is listening to great speakers of course <laughs> and I, now I, I feel him i i see him already laughing because he knows <laughs> what happened at that moment and of course he was in charge and a speechwriter had uh, had a I had written a beautiful speech for, for him, but what he did, and I, I show it to all, all the people, he did like this. Oh. And, he, and he apologized for a speechwriter who maybe he was in the audience, and he started from, from his heart to share a very human story. Mm -hmm. And that moved me, and that touched me, and that's the reason why we became friends. That's the reason why he signed up for, for the speaker's role. That's the reason why we are here now together. And, and in connection with that, uh, I think, uh, Tracy, we met each other three years ago at uh, the JT Fox Make a Success, the, the place to be. I think there are a couple of people in joining this webinar for, from, from that. It's, it's all started where where we grow our family, our beautiful family. Also, thanks to JT, because without JT, we did not know each other. And uh, and yeah, I was there with my wife Gwen, and uh, from the very first, and you won the award there, I had the best speaker award. And since then, uh, and I invited you for the ING Bank here. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's 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 beautiful to have you here, Tracy. It's beautiful to have you here, Mart. And let, let us start, people, let us start, people. And uh, I first would love to ask Tracy, of course, the question, where did it all start? Of course, you were, you were born without limbs, without arms. And I see in you the most positive person of Canada, maybe, maybe of the world. I, I'm not sure yet, but you have a smile. You are very positive. So, Tell me all about it. What, what happened in your life? You know, you, you, you say born without my arms and legs. And I think I'm very lucky. I think I was born exactly the way I was meant to be. And, and you know, I am no war hero like Mart's wonderful Invictus Games participants. You know, the Invictus means unconquered. And so the, the unconquerable Invictus and I am the unstoppable, but I'm no hero. I, I was just a little girl that wanted to get a cookie from a cookie jar. And I learned to uh, disarm any limiting beliefs to go get that cookie, right? I'm just a regular two-year-old that needs to, to, you know, disarm the and boycott the norm to roll over there and steal that cookie. And, and as a result, that's what happened with kindergarten and skiing and sailing and scuba diving and skydiving. And, and then when I traveled to developing countries and, and seeing children with great disparities, I ended up in 20 countries as a teacher, as a humanitarian teacher. And, and then as a teacher, I ended up coming back and being an educator in the corporate world busting up pilot strikes for Air Canada and and bringing boycotting government reform for our national pharmaceutical and 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 
crushing obstacles for Uber into Canada so that we would have Uber here in Canada. So I'm very lucky that I learned very early that no and O just means we just don't know. We just don't know yet, but we can do it. I can do it. You can do it. We can all do it. We are all unstoppable, not just unstoppable, Tracy. Yeah. Who, who, who gave you that name, unstoppable? It, it followed me, it, but it stuck. You know, in kindergarten, my teacher said, oh, she was unstoppable in skiing. They said, oh, she was unstoppable in sailing. She was unstoppable. But it wasn't until Magnus Ligidol, a gold Olympian, I'd spent three months sleeping out in my car and I was still there. It was like 90 days in the 90th morning, 530 in the morning. I show up to wash his boats and uh, he says, you are totally unstoppable. And he took a magic marker, a Sharpie, and he went over to this really old boat. And there was like a creature that was living in the bottom of it. And he said, here, you can start with this boat. You repair it and you fix it up and you can use this boat to train in. And he wrote Unstoppable Tracy because he told me no for 90 days. And on the 90th day, he wrote Unstoppable Tracy on this boat without even knowing how it followed me everywhere. So I finally threw in the towel and said, okay, if the world wants to call me Unstoppable Tracy, but I'll only accept it. If you know world that you are unstoppable too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's it's really meant to be, and not only sailing. You you climb mountains, the, the bronze medal in the Paralympics with skiing. Uh, sorry, but uh, it's it's really not unstoppable, but also maybe unbelievable, unstoppable. <laughs> uh, th 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 thank you, Tracy. Let, let's let's have a look into to the life of. Of, of Martha, of course, because I think everybody knows or feels or sees uh, the army uh, from from the media, from ev everything. But uh, nobody sees the army from a different side. And maybe it's a, a good question for Mart. Where did it all start? Who was Mart as a little boy? <laughs> um, actually, I was a war child. Um, my mother was born in 1925, so she witnessed the occupation by the Germans for five years, and she was actually liberated by the Canadians in 1945. Uh, and my father was uh, forced to do forced labor in a labor camp in Germany, close to Berlin. So we had to work on a uh, on testing the engines uh, from the Daimler company for the Messerschmitt planes. For three years, and he was liberated by the Russians. So, in both my parents, in their lives, that whole war played a very important role. And what I learned from my father actually is uh, the first thing I recall as a little boy is that I walked together with him on the uh, Osterbeek Airborne Cemetery, uh, where about 2000. British and Polish soldiers were laid to rest based on the Operation Martin Garden. And then my father told me words like, Mart, remember, freedom is not for free and will never be for free. I still recall these words. Oh. And, and then he had to go to high school close to Arnhem. I was raised close to Arnhem. And uh, I was not a very uh, outstanding students you know i didn't have, have time to learn i did volleyball uh, soccer and so on so i was actually only good in two classes that was sports and history well if you combine sport and history you might find yourself somewhere close to the armed forces you know uh, physically doing sports challenge yourself bit of history so on one day um, i filled in a form to apply for the military academy and based on my education, the only thing I could do was apply for infantry officer, probably the most physical, courageous, but simple type of officer there is. Uh, everybody was uh, surprised that I was admitted, so I went to the military academy, served for nearly 40 years as an infantry officer in all different levels, um, went on missions in Bosnia and a year in uh, Afghanistan. I wrote a book about that year, and when I retired in 2016, 
uh, I decided a to spend more time with my family did not succeed in that mission yet but still working on it and secondly to do things that I really believe in and one of the things that came across uh, were the Invictus Games uh, I was uh, teaching leadership in a uh, university in uh, the Netherlands and we sat together with some people evaluating and uh, suddenly one of us said why don't we organize the Invictus Games I said that's a great idea let's start tomorrow so that's how it started actually in 2017 not from an institution not from the Minister of Defense not from a from a uh, existing entity but just three met people coming together and say well we just start doing it and uh, a couple of years uh, later actually this week the Invictus Games uh, were scheduled to take place in The Hague with a budget of uh, 18 million euros and more than 2,000 competitors and their friends and family based on coronavirus it's postponed to hopefully next year but it is just doing things you believe in and uh, see who's going to stop you and that's why the Invictus meets the Unstoppable, I think. Yeah, Mark, Mark, I'm not sure if everybody knows what the Invictus Games are. So can you, can you explain it in, in short what it is? The, the Invictus Games are uh, sport games, uh, especially developed for soldiers who were wounded physically or mentally in combat or in service. Uh, and the whole idea was actually brought forward by uh, the Duke of Sussex, Prince Harry, who saw how important sport was in the recovery process of wounded American soldiers. So he said, I'm going to take this a step further. And he started in 2014 in London with the 18 nations, brought together 500 uh, soldiers, veterans, and they all could take two friends and family with them was a huge success so after that it went on to uh, orlando to toronto to canada to sydney and we applied to uh, get them to the netherlands a because it is a, a it is a very touching event and you cannot compare it with anything else it's very emotional because it actually shows you the incredible strength of the human being that's the invictus games and secondly there was a clear link with the fact that we celebrate 75 years of liberation in the Netherlands of this year. So we brought the two together in The Hague. Yeah, and it's, it's exactly one week after the deliberation de uh, day in, in Holland, and uh, where uh, Holland was, yeah, got the freedom because of the Canadians. Thank you, thank you again. Thank you again. <laughs> so it, it's beautiful to to have this connection again from intuition i brought you together but there's more happening now uh it's it's always fun to 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 connect to people they don't know each other and uh may, maybe mark has a question for tracy do you have a question for tracy yeah tracy just know you now just a little bit what what fascinates me is the is the incredible power that you have you don't just show it but you have it and i ask myself the question what drives you which 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 power drives you what makes you so incredibly strong and courageous i th i think every day there are people saying no and, and sometimes it's just, you know, in a, in a coffee shop when we used to be able to go out and about and, and someone wants to hand me a drink, uh, they're afraid to hand me a drink and I'm lucky. And, and my biggest no is, is this viral video. There's 60 million viral views. But my first memorable no was the first day of kindergarten. And the principal sees me standing there all excited and at the door of the school he tells my mother no i'm sorry tracy can't go to this school and my mom she wisely asks in a friendly way she says how come he's like well no hands and no legs how there's one teacher how's she gonna tie her shoelaces go to the washroom we just don't have the resources 
And so my mom, she, she counter offers and she says, I, I understand. Uh, she said, do you think we could just try for one week? And he said, okay, one week. And she, she fell to her knees and she grabbed my arms, right? And I can feel her fingerprints. And she says, Tracy, it's really important. Nobody's left behind. And I remember looking up at the principal that had just said that I couldn't stay and my heart was in my stomach. And I'm looking up at him and his eyes are like all welled up with tears because he could see my mom on her knees holding my arms. And so he's all excited that I get to stay now. And he raced outside to try to find me at recess time because if I got outside, it would mean that I wouldn't have to leave on Friday. And I wasn't there. So we ran inside to find my teacher. How come I wasn't there? And when he got inside, the teacher said, oh, well, her little friend needed to tie her shoelaces. So Tracy gave her a hand. And it turns out none of the 30 kids could tie their shoelaces. And, and I'm so lucky that I had this Liverpoolian tough love mom and and she was the kind of mom that both me and my sister, you know, we both had to make our bed and we both had to tie our shoelaces and 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 be there and be able to do things for ourselves. Not because I didn't have hands, but just because that's the kind of mom she was. Beautiful. And I'm so lucky. And maybe, maybe she knew something I didn't know, right? And that, you know, how come the only girl with no hands was the only girl required to be able to tie her shoelaces? So I learned at five years old when when adults would tell me, no, you can't come to this school. No, you can't have this cookie. I learned at five years old that no, N-O just means they don't know, K-N-O-W. And you just keep at it until we figure it out. That's how I lasted 90 days with Magnus sleeping in my car. He just didn't know. And, and so I think I'm very lucky to be born this way because even in COVID right now, I'm lucky to have a little bit of grit and resilience from all of the, the obstacles to help me just keep figuring it out. I'll figure it out. I'm going to survive this isolation just like all of our wonderful listeners. Yeah. Thanks. Hang in there. Th thank you, Tracy. And, and, and people, please, if you haven't watched the cold cast video, um, happy, happy to share the link uh, to you if, if you want to, but, but it's very easy, Tracy, a uh, gold cast in Google, and you, you really experience that story, what she was just telling again. It's really moving. Okay. Tracy, do, Tracy, do you have a, a question for Mark? Of course you, you, you do. And, yeah. and we, we, we haven't prepared the questions, so it's, it's beautiful to see how they react. Whatever. Where they're at. Well, and, and, you know, I have a silly question and a real question in some ways. I promised all a lot of our listeners here. I'm very lucky. Mark being in who he is, isn't allowed on Facebook. So I've been telling 30,000 people, Mark, that, you know, when we hung up with our practice call for today, yeah. that we ran at a time and I couldn't ask you about how come Prince Harry chose mm -hmm. Meg over me you know what was behind that with prince harry so my big question to you that that i've been telling thousands and thousands of people i was going to ask you today was how come he picked meg <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me mm -hmm. about prince harry <laughs> what do you know i know that you served together can you tell do you us want to hear the that? truth or do you want to hear the real truth or are you ready for it <laughs> Uh, uh, anything you say will be perfect. Yeah, and I, I probably think that he doesn't prefer blonde, but but that's 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 just a wild guess. <laughs> but I think that's one of the things that come into play here. You know, I, I I we served together in Afghanistan. Yes, although I didn't meet him, I had forty five thousand soldiers back then, and um, I was commanding them. And Prince Harry was flying a helicopter. Oh a combat helicopter in uh, escorting the medevac helicopter. The medevac helicopter is the medical evacuation helicopter. 
Okay. So every time that I received a message that a British soldier was wounded in action, I knew that the helicopters were gearing up and within three, four minutes were in the air uh, flying to this position to pick up that soldier and that probably one of the pilots in the helicopter escorting them was probably uh, Prince Harry and, and, and trying to get the wounded soldiers back. And then, <clears throat> uh, there, there are some very touching videos from uh, this, uh, from the way they pick up the soldiers and go back to base. <clears throat> Sorry. And um, so we serve together. And it means that if you talk about missions and especially Afghanistan, you just don't share the picture, but you also share the smell and the sound. Oh. So it's very easy to relate because you have the same references. And that is that special bond that probably veterans have all over the world. And that is what I presume that drives him to organize the Invictus Games. This is not just an act of courtesy. It, it, it is, he is extremely involved uh, in the Invictus Games. And he is, and, and, uh, um, uh, and he will be and will stay committed in the future with the Invictus Games. And um, I think one of the reasons for that is Afghanistan and what he saw there, and especially the resilience that he saw there, both physically and mentally, yeah. by the wounded uh, soldiers. And um, I think that made a huge impression on him and, and, and uh, brought him to uh, having the opportunity to organize it, to use his contacts and his position to organize the uh, Invictus Games. And, and you know, uh, what I see is, if I see him interacting with the soldiers, I see that he is completely at ease. That is his world, you know, that is where he feels uh, comfortable in. And, and that it's very touching, but also very honored to be part of that organization. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Send me your picture. I can show your picture to him and see what happens. You never know. You never know. You, have to, you, you, have, you have to do it directly after the webinar because tomorrow he is meeting Prince Harry. Oh, I missed him by one day. <laughs> we could invite him here today, one day away. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he's joining in the in the webinar. In the oh. webinar. Maybe he's joining in the webinar. Maybe. Oh. It's, uh, uh, Hang I, on, everybody. I, I'm always when I make a mistake, I always apologize to people. And there's one thing I must apologize, and that's the line that uh, Mart has given me. I am the master of my fate, <laughs> and I'm the captain of my soul. Uh, I focus on two, two words, it was fate, faith, and master, master, but it, it wasn't not clear, but, but I think we, 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 we can uh, go and uh, go deep in that line, and it's, it's connected with, with, with the army. So, so tell me more about that line, what, what, what is so special to that line, Mark? Uh, these are the last two lines of a poem by uh, W.E. Henley, and the poem is called Invictus, and it's actually about how people, when they find themselves down, how they find the, 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 the real strength to carry on. And the last two lines of his poem were actually are the motto of the Invictus Games. That is, I am the master of my fate, I am the captain of my soul. And it's really true, you know, the Invictus Games with 500 competitors. Yeah. These are 500 stories of people finding themselves in a very bad situation, physically, mentally, or both. And it might have taken them two years, five years, seven years to realize that if they keep on living by their not fulfilled dreams, by their lost opportunities, by the limitations, uh, they, but also their loved ones, uh, it will have a major negative impact 
uh, on their lives. So there comes a moment that you realize that you need to change and that you need to overcome what came to you. And then start this long process of, of uh, making yourself better, climbing out of that hole with three steps forward, two steps backward. But if you just hear these stories, and I was in Sydney with the former Invictus Games just for three hours listening to these stories, then I really understood the spirit of the Invictus Games. And it's not just for veterans. Yes, we do help veterans with the Invictus Games. It is good for society to realize and understand what veterans went through and, and how the how the freedom we have is not for free and people sacrifice that. But it's also for society. It's, it's for everyone, for young kids, for older people. Look at these soldiers uh, and look at their strengths, you know, and they are just human beings. You are a human being. Take your fate into your own hands and show the world how strong you are. That's in victory. Wow. Th thank you for the for connection with, with, of course, human beings. Well, what, what, what does it mean to be a human being, e even this time, I, I guess? Uh, we, we are talking now about, okay, we, we are in lockdown, we, we struggle a lot, we don't know how. Uh, some people stand still, some people are moving, some people uh, uh, need other people, but they cannot connect. Some people, don't have internet where in the world. We, we don't see what is happening in Africa, for example. We, at the television, we only see uh, corona and uh, sports that doesn't exist. So uh, in, in my belief is we we help each other more. We, we try to be more human, we give more and, and also connect with, okay, it, it's it's good to fail. It's good to take that risk uh, and, 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 and help each other to, to, to learn from all the things that, that we are human beings connect. And we connect through stories. We connect through stories. What now is happening in the world, uh, there are movements creating positive uh, messages in the world. So, so we need each other to solve the problems in the world globally and not only from one country. That, that's my belief, that's my belief. So, so uh, let me ask the, the people who joined this webinar, please, please ask uh, questions. Uh, the, the, we have 30 more minutes to, to ask these beautiful human beings questions. Uh, what, what are your fears? Tell us, how can we help you uh, with, with answers that maybe these, these people in this webinar have? So please, uh, join us with questions and uh, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe it's, it's Tracy you you have more stories about how to How to find your inner strength how uh, you maybe maybe you are the the example for many people uh, uh, To look at so tell me a short example and then I watch uh, watch There's one question already. Uh, what will happen with Invictus? What are your plans during COVID so? Uh, De Broe is asking you, Mart. Uh, simple answer, although it's not simple at all, but we postponed the 2020 games based on the coronavirus. Um, and what we want to do, our intent is to have the Invictus Games in uh, 2021. So we are still very committed to the Invictus Games because it's so important for society. We're now in the process of informing our partners, trying to find the additional assets that you need, especially financial assets. And um, if all goes well, we hope that in a couple of weeks from now, we can announce that we will have Invictus Games in 2021 in The Hague. And, and what, so, month? what month? We don't know yet. It has to do something with the, with the virus, but also with the whole sports uh, schedule, the Olympic Games, and so on and so on. We're trying to figure that out. We, we, but we, we, I, I do a suggestion. We can, we can organize it together with the Eurovision Song Festival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, well, um, <laughs> luckily you'd never hear me sing, so uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's really keep it. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's cheaper and it's also more sustainable. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, you know, but uh, the great thing is, 
um, it is not about us. It is about the soldiers and their friends and family that deserve the have the Invictus Games and have the experience. And that's what drives us. And you know, I feel great support in uh, side. You know, in a, in a couple of weeks we can say we're on. Go ahead and never stop Invictus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, another question, Marielle. Uh, uh, thank you for having you, Marielle. Uh, good, good to see you in this webinar. Also, one of the family uh, of, of JT Fox. Uh, a question for both of you: What are your role models? Models, of course, you you are role model for for many people uh, who, who join here. But who who is? Give me one name. Who is your role role model? When I was uh, getting my legs repaired, when I was very young, I was in a waiting room and this 18 year old girl came in talking to the reception saying, you know, there's no sailing for children with disabilities in Canada anywhere. And I, I just did a project at school and I want to start sailing for children with disability. Please give me, you know, your your names of your patients. And because of privacy, they couldn't. But I happened to be sitting there on that couch that day. And so I could say, oh, I want to, I want to. And, you know, that first year, I, I, I spent the whole year falling out of the boat. Because without my legs, I was top heavy. And, and I had a life jacket on and I could swim. But this 18-year-old girl, Kathy Smart, she didn't, she didn't tell me I couldn't participate. And she let me come back and come back until I figured out how to balance in the boat. And, and Kathy Smart and I, I grew up to be a sailing instructor with her. And then when she left, I ran the school. And then when, when uh, a big tall ship uh, came around looking for a captain, they'd had every country in the world, every race, every gender preference on this boat, but they'd never had a person with a disability. So they brought me on board. And, and, and that's thanks to Kathy Smart. And then Kathy Smart and I, we went to Nepal and I was the first quadruple amputee and I think the only, the first quadruple amputee to climb the Annapurna region of the Himalayas. And, and, and because of Kathy Smart, I, you know, I got my degree and, and so many of the early exposures of sailing and climbing and are all Kathy Smart. And I pursued my leadership development thanks to Kathy Smart and and uh, this young 18-year-old trying to, to disrupt the norm and steal a few patients, even though it was illegal. <laughs> Mark, Mark, what about you? I don't have a specific role model, but 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 because there's so many great people out there. But let me give you just one example of of something that really touched me. I was in Afghanistan visiting the uh, Marine Task Force, U.S. Uh, uh, Marines, and I had the honor to fly for one hour in a helicopter together with the U.S. Marine Corps captain, and his name was uh, Karl van der Giesen. And he was probably selected because he had a Dutch name, although he had that he hadn't any roots anymore with the Netherlands. So we flew for more than an hour, and after 30 minutes, you were through talking on operations. So I asked him. Uh, when I, um, how many times did you go on mission? What's your family situation? This was his eighth mission. And he was married. He lived in San Diego, had a small daughter of two years old. And in six weeks, he was going to redeploy, which was great because in three months, they were going to have another baby. So we went back to the airfield and he gave me his flight suit. Actually, you can see it in the back, his flight overall. And he gave that to me, said, this is a present for me. Do you see it? It's over there. Ah, the lot yeah. yeah. Show it. Yeah. This is flight overall. Can you see oh, it? Oh, wow. Yeah. His overalls. Yeah. So uh, after Afghanistan, or uh, six weeks later, I came back from Kabul, and we had a ramp ceremony. In a ramp ceremony, you say goodbye to a soldier that's killed in action. And because I came back from Kabul, I didn't know the details. So I flew in and say, who is it? I said, well, these are two American pilots because two helicopters crashed into each other in the air and two pilots didn't survive the crash. And one of them was Captain von der Giesen. 
So in his last flight, handover takeover, he was killed in action. Mm. And uh, after Afghanistan, I uh, contacted his wife. Uh, the son was born, they were living in San Diego and they wanted to return the flight overall. So they had something which belonged to Kyle to mm -hmm. remember it. And she said, you know, keep it because, and she said a line which is also a monument for the Canadian soldiers who fell in my village yeah. in early April 45. They say, uh, dying for freedom isn't the worst that could happen being forgotten is. Uh -huh. So keep that overall. Really? Here. Yes, I it now. Well, <laughs> thank you for that. And uh, I think uh, a lot of people in, in this webinar would love to volunteer for the Invictus game. So, uh, yes. uh, Stephen, I, I think, uh, Sawston, if I pronounce it right, uh, how can they volunteer for the Invictus games? <laughs> Just relatively easy. Follow the website. Uh, we had uh, more than uh, 5,000 people applying to be a volunteer from all <laughs> over the world. Yeah. We selected 1,000, but now the games are postponed. We are going again through this process as soon as we know that we reschedule them on the plane 21. So follow the website and see what happens. We will, uh, we will let you know after the webinar or doing. Maybe Kim is uh, uh, looking that up and help you with, with the link. Uh, another question uh, for Tracy. From, uh, let me see, uh, what mental and physical hurdles did you have to overcome during Ocean Sail? During Ocean Sail, oh, yeah. you know, I was in this uh, regatta against World Cup able-bodied Viking-like men, like big beefcake men like we got two strong handsome men on this call right now but they were even bigger and stronger than maurice and and mart uh and and seven feet tall and there were 27 of them on that start line and and on any start line in sailing you have to try to carve yourself a hole a space to be able to because the, the start line is usually shorter than the number of boats there are so only some of those 30 boats can cross that start line first and trying to break through and and i thought that my biggest hurdle in in ocean sailing was that they have their their legs to steer the boat in this 2.4 you can steer with your feet and they have these great gigantic mu muscles in fact on the call right now steven is here with his big gigantic muscles and that they could use their big long arms to haul the sails in or if there's 20 knots of wind and it's very physical and i've got one arm to steer the boat manage 24 lines balance as someone without arms and legs that weebles and wobbles can, can you swim tracy can, can you I can, yes i swim really well i love swimming uh, it was really my parents were so smart we lived in affordable housing like nobody had a swimming pool on our street, but my parents, they decided to make some very great sacrifices and decided we were the corner street at the end of a crescent. So our backyard was the biggest and they put in the best they could, a, a cheapy pool, a swimming pool. And I, and I learned to swim really early, like before four years old. And so all of the kids on the street, they would all come to my backyard so that they would swim in the one pool on the affordable housing street. And so I loved swimming because it meant kids would come over and be in the swimming pool with me. So I'm a really strong swimmer, uh, mm -hmm. which is great. So if I fall out of the boat, no problem. I love swimming. Mom used to share this story where, you know, she'd wake up at breakfast and I would be in the pool and I was told I'm not allowed in the pool until there's an adult, but I constantly be in the pool. And she said, I have a mask on and I've had my snorkel on and I'd be swimming around and she'd have to sting her finger, stick her finger in the hole of the snorkel to get me to come up. And I would come up and she's like, come have breakfast. What are you doing in the pool? <laughs> and she said she'd have to repeat that at lunchtime and at dinner time because I just was in the pool all day. So luckily that gave me strong skills for ocean swimming. But my biggest obstacle was not... 
having, you know, 27 able-bodied men in Melbourne, Australia at an Olympic class qualifier, right? It's an Olympic class qualifier, an able-bodied male dominated ricotta, only three women and it's Melbourne, Australia. And that when I get there, of course, I couldn't ship my boat there. It was too expensive. So I have duct tape and I have a pool noodle over my knees. I'm trying to rig my boat so that I can sail this rental. And I got boycotted. I got boycotted by all these able-bodied people, mostly men with arms and legs. Like, no. and, and they said it's a one-class design. And that duct tape and those pool noodles, they don't count. Right. They were not one design. And so I think I, they thought that I was going to be in their way and a burden and that I didn't have a place or a right to be on that start line. And I tell you, I ripped off that. I went right away when I heard it and I cut the duct tape off and I threw the pool noodle in an environmentally safe place to be reused <laughs> Threw the pool noodle away. And I sailed that regatta and, and, and they completely underestimated me. And the bonus to that was on that start line because, you know, who gets off the start first is pretty much who wins the race. That's the, the you start right. You get the right mindset. That's who wins the race. And I came against those 30 sailors seventh overall. Wow. And, and, and most of them were able-bodied men. And, and I was just trying to train for the Paralympics. The Invictus Games are magical. 500 competitors celebrating recovery and being unconquerable even after the unfathomable. And, and the Paralympics is about high performance. Many of those athletes, and there's 1,600 of them that were here for the Pan Am Para Pan Am. And it's, you know, and more and more at the other games. And it's it's incredible that all of these athletes with disabilities, many of them place in the able-bodied sports. And I never dreamt it would be me. But it was much harder obstacle than being bullied in school or or trying to get a job as with a master's in business who's broke up pilot strikes for airlines. And yet people look at me and think that I shouldn't be hired yeah but it was much harder to be told that they were boycotting me after uh you know four years and three months of living in my car and 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 giving up work and giving up family and giving up love and giving up children and again of course with, with uh, what your mom gave you that you must be there for, for the other and 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 uh, proceed in, in your belief uh, I, I think it's all started, of course, with, with you as a child, with Mark as a child. And I have a question uh, Anton was asking. Um, uh, he said, very inspiring stories, you, you both. Uh, what belief would you like all children in, in the world to have? Mark, can I ask you that question? Um, first, to, to always trust yourself and your inner strengths and have 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 faith in what you can uh, and secondly realize that we live in a world together we live in a society and in a society you can only live together happily if you are willing and able to give more than you take and by the end of the day that will give you probably much more than just having your self-interest in the first place. It's all about the willingness to share and realize that we live this world uh, with a, a, a responsibility that comes to all of us. Yeah. You know, we have inherited this world. We have to pass it on to the generations to follow. And that means that we have to foster this world and invest in this world and probably leave a better place behind. Beautiful. And now in this, this time, during lockdown, during Corona, uh, many parents, of course, have a different kind of relationship with, with their children. Uh, <laughs> maybe the good, the good and the bad. Yeah. I, 
I, I see it more as a beautiful period to see uh, uh, my children from a different side, my children of, of uh, nine and seven, uh, two sons. And I really love the spirit to, to, to help them, to inspire them, to, to show them the way to what they really believe in. How you, you're talking about it, Mark. Uh, maybe maybe same question for, for you. Uh, uh, what, what can you uh, give to, to parents or the children, uh, Tracy? Good. Well, I love Mart's lesson. You know, we are all shoelace leaders, right? Uh, I didn't choose to be, I just wanted to go play, but the, the most beautiful gift. And, and Maurice, in the beginning, you're talking about how, how everybody is at a different place in their readiness and their emotions and their wellness. Uh, and, and, and Mart reflected on that with the athletes of where they were on their healing journey before joining the Invictus Games. And, and you know, I think we need to respect that wherever we are on our journey is exactly where we need to be. And giving us the strength and the resources for the next steps. And, and sometimes we have no idea how we're going to do something. So em embrace the possibility, even when you don't know how. You know, I worked because I've got two wonderful Netherlands folks and so many online. I lived in the Netherlands. I worked on a ship called the Lutgerdinja. The Lutgerdinja. It was 110 feet long, a flat bottom tall ship. It was a magical ship. I loved it. And we went port to port. And uh, and when when I was in Birmingham, I also I didn't know how I was going to work with these 24 people on a barge and i got no arms no legs and we you have to get out of the boat for 26 locks and you get out and you run to the lock and it's physical labor and you jump back on the boat and i'm like no legs and there's no way i could do it with my legs on but my role and i didn't know how but i embraced the possibility that there would be some role that i would be a valuable contributor i would be a shoelace leader somehow and and I, on the barge, there's a great big, our, our motor uh, conked out and we had to get through 26 locks still. So we got this great big pole, a barge pole that was super deep to reach the canal. And we needed one person to sit on the boat with this great big barge pole with strong arms to, and you pretty much have to hug this pole to drive the boat forward and to sit in the boat and who's willing to go into the lock. Everybody else has to come off the boat and sit in the lock to go through the barge. And so I be became the captain. Wherever I go, I end up the captain, the captain of the barge. And it was my role to sit on the barge and go into the barge and to propel us out of the lock. And, and I didn't know how. And so you don't know how you're going to get through these times in COVID. And, and I don't know what your struggles are, financial or love or loneliness, what your hearts are going through right now. And we all have every excuse. We have very realistic reasons to be distraught. But can I share with all of the children and all of our listeners that when I live a life of no excuses, I get to live a life of no limits, no excuses, no limits. It's a little bit of tough love. No excuses, no limits is the bonus. No excuses, no limits. And, and you're okay wherever you are in your journey. You're just getting there. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm connecting that now with, with uh, a webinar of, of next week with General Peter van Uum, a very good friend of Mars. He, he lost his son in Afghanistan. Uh, I think one day after he got in charge as a general, uh, it will be uh, next week, same time, uh, around this time. And I, uh, uh, I was just sharing a question of Marielle. And we, we met each other through the JT Fox uh, in, in LA uh, last November. And and Marielle, uh, yeah, she really she, she's a very good friend of uh, Peter van Uh a, a different webinar, a different focus. Um, uh, we we have about ten minutes now, six six ten minutes. Uh, we are we are talking about find find the superhero in you. Uh, what about find the superhero in your team? 
Huh? Uh, Mart, what is your vision about it? How can we uh, find the superhero in my in your team? Um, there might not be a superhero in your team, but it's a changing role, probably based on the circumstances. You know, um, um, we are confronted with life. Uh, death and wounded soldiers every day in Afghanistan, you know, there comes a moment that it touches you, it touches you every day, but that you are becoming really emotional. And, and if you get emotional, that's okay, because you're a human being, you're not a machine, you're not an engine, but then you need some people to share your grief with. And, and you need some people in your team that are willing to take that role. Uh, but you also need some people in your team who help you back to professionalism because there are still people out there. You have to make decisions about life on this. You have to stay focused. Uh, you have people who need vision in your team. And you got people who, who contribute to the team as such. And that, that is a great thing of working in a team. The more diverse your team is, the better actually it is because everybody, he or she can bring her best capabilities to the team effort. And that is why I am a firm believer, especially since Afghanistan, of diversity, of, of organizing your own resistance, people who, who, who dare to speak out uh, and have a different opinion than you have, because but end of the day, that only makes you better. So it is about really, it's about team efforts in making everybody stronger and feel comfortable that they can contribute based on their capabilities and their character to the team. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to ask you that question. Uh, there's somebody who already uh, tried to, to to have the same question over and over again. And of course, it's the biggest fear of many human beings the stage fear. Uh, how do you overcome your stage fear? <laughs> <laughs> the truth, full honest truth. I don't. <laughs> you know, courage is not without. It was scary jumping out of that plane. It was scary scuba diving a hundred feet deep on New Year's Day for my hundredth dive, and it is scary being on a stage in front of thousands introducing. John Travolta or Jane Fonda, you know, being the opening speaker, they're there for somebody much bigger than myself and being that opening speaker. You don't. It's 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 you're doing it in spite of the fear. I, I remember and I think it kind of fits with your superhero in your team and overcoming your fear. I remember, you know, I, I climbed the Himalayas and I remember hanging off of a cliff and there was this big line on my stomach for the lifeline and I look left of me and nobody's there. And I looked right of me and nobody's there. And I'm hanging uh, about 840 feet off the ground on this particular cliff. And I felt frozen in fear and I felt completely alone hanging there. And all of a sudden somebody shouted and, and they said, Tracy, are you on the ground? And, and I'd forgotten. Right? There's somebody on my lifeline. I am independent. It's me and my spatula that I like to call Trevor. Me and me and Trevor that are hanging there on that lifeline. But I'm not alone, right? All of you wonderful people that joined us today are my lifeline. Maurice is my European Speakers Bureau lifeline. Mart is my lifeline for living freely in this world. Thanks to Mart and all of his 45,000 soldiers. One of them was one of my besties. Uh, Julie was in Afghanistan with Mart. Uh, and she's just one of 45,000. I don't expect him to necessarily remember her. But it now Prince Harry is. Uh, and now life. Prince Harry will be my lifeline when I slip him my picture and offer to babysit. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I agree, of course. I, I, I've been working in this uh, speaking and event industry for quite a long time. And of course, every, every human being has fear. And it's, 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 it's just take that first step. 
Yeah. Uh, we, we are talking about belief, belief in yourself in be, and be blind for the, for the naysayers. And you, you cannot do it because no. it, it's, it, it, st stop it. Just, just believe, feel, feel and follow your, your, your feelings. It follow your, it, it starts with believing and, and know what your purpose is. Really know what your purpose is. And now it's the right time to, to, to connect with your, your soul. We are to talk about your soul. And, and then that's more, that is most important. Believe in yourself. Just, just be that one leader that you want to be. You are the authority. Vic has shared with me that you're the, uh, you're the author of your own life story. You are the author of your own life story. That's yes. most important. And, and when you know, when you find your purpose, then you can start live again it, it, it very happily. Uh, Despite the fear. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's it's 60 minutes, but we, we have time to, to, to share the people some, some takeaways that, that, uh, that they can start today and tomorrow and, and learn and learn, learn with together, share, share, learn together. That's most important. Uh, Mart, can you share some takeaways for, for the people? Um, first, accept that every human being lives with fear and emotions. You're not a machine. It's okay to have them. And it is part of you. It's part of everyone. Um, secondly, um, uh, Accept that you have your weaknesses. You know, everybody of us has weaknesses. And it is accepting them that helps you the best to go forward. That is, that is how we are. And last but not least, stop thinking that we can control everything because it's not true. We only control such a small part of our lives. Things will come to you that are unexpected, that you don't deserve that you have trouble with, it will happen to you. So always go back to yourself and your inner strengths and try to find a way to handle these. But uh, stop in thinking that you can control the world and your future. You can contribute to your world and your future, but you're only a very small part of society. Thank, thank you so much, Mark. Tracy. Your last words in this webinar, but not <laughs> your your really last words, because uh, oh. still still in short, if you still have questions, uh, you you can share them with with us through through email, uh, and they are happy to to answer your questions after the webinar. So so uh, please do, Tracy. Your last words. No, there's the secret is that I was born limb itless. Is a bit of a bad joke, limitless. But the bigger secret is that that you are born limitless too. We are all born limitless. And so exceed your uncertainty. Feeling uncertain is no excuse for inaction. Embrace possibility. Even when you don't know how, don't avoid failure. And earn independence. But earning independence is not alone. Earning independence and, and courage in those fearful moments, who you surround yourself with is who you become. That's how you earn independence, not alone. And no excuses gives you the bonus of no limitless life. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Maurice, for inviting me. Mart. I'm, I'm mad at you for bringing me to tears over and over. <laughs> but I'm so lucky that 50% of those tears are usually crying from laughter. So I'm so glad to have joined you on this call. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Given the, the opportunity to meet such a great person yeah. with such incredible strengths. And I would end with uh, the famous words, you are the master of your fate. You're the captain of your soul. Good luck. Th th thank you, you both. Uh, you made it, this happen. The, this first gathering between Tracy and the Invictus uh, 
it, it, I, I told you, everyone, it, it, this was a very special webinar uh, with emotions, with, with a laugh. Um, uh, last webinar, last last week, we went to Down Under uh, to have Peter Turin, uh, the most positive person of Australia, about e easy to do, easy not to do. That's your choice. This time we went a little bit deeper in that uh, we, we have two great human beings as example of easy to do, easy not to do. That's your choice. Uh, next webinar, we go uh, to Belgium, actually, with a, a thought leader, a customer focus uh, about now we, we just go back in time to, to the twilight zone time, what we can learn from that. Uh, and how he is seeing the future. Uh, it's beautiful to see that we go very, very, very back into history, what we, what we can copy from history into what's now is happening. And next, next week we have uh, Peter van Um, General Peter van Um, uh, and we go to Singapore on Thursday with Fikas Malkani and one of the most famous futurists of the Netherlands. We connected them both and we go more uh, to a spiritual world. Is this all happening? Karma or universal wisdom? Uh, that's for next Thursday. Thank you all for, for joining us. Uh, thank, thank you because, because of you, we can do this, of course. But we keep on going, we keep on doing it together. And I hope, uh, yeah. Tell us your feedback. Uh, we, we are very happy to improve because every day we can improve and every day we can live and every can, day we can give to other people and, and help them. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have to do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>